Hello students, my name is Niyati Seth and thanks for watching Edipedia Word videos. My topic for the presentation is the 8th section of the chapter Movement and Locomotion of Class 11th. In this section of presentation, we'll be studying about the disorders of muscular and skeletal system. Okay. So, first is titani. Titani is a condition that is due usually to low blood calcium and is characterized by a spasm of the hands and feet, a cramps a spasm of the voice box, and overactive neurological reflexes. Titany is generally considered to result from a very low calcium level in the blood. However, titany can be uh, also a result from reduction in the ionized fraction of plasma calcium. Without marked hypocalcemia, hypocalcemia means low blood calcium. Okay. So, it is a rapid spasm in the muscle due to low calcium in body fluid. The nervous system becomes increasingly excitable and the nerves discharge spontaneously and they send impulse to the skeletal muscle and cause spasmodic contractions. Okay. Now, the second one is Mysthemia Gravis. Okay, Mysthemia gravis is an autoimmune disorder that affects neuromuscular junction that leads to fatigue or tiredness, weakening and paralysis of skeletal muscle. Okay, and uh, you can say that in this a person feels uh, very tired uh, because it affects this uh, myasthemia gravis it uh, affects neuromuscular junction that leads to tiredness weakening and the paralysis of the skeletal muscle okay and it is a very rare chronic autoimmune disease which is marked by muscular weakness without atrophy and caused by a defect in the action of acetylcholine in the neuromuscular junction okay and uh, uh, myasthenia gravis uh, is a, a neuromuscular disease that leads to fluctuating muscle weakness and fatigue in most common cases muscle weakness is caused by circulating antibodies that block acetylcholine receptors at the post synaptic neuromuscular junction and that inhibits the excitatory neurotransmitter acetylcholine or nicotinic receptors at neuromuscular junction so and and mastemia gravis it can be treated with medication such as you know immunosuppressants and acetylcholinase trace inhibitors okay and this disease is diagnosed only in 3 to 30 people per million per year and diagnosis is becoming more common due to increased awareness okay now what are the causes of this disease myasthenia gravis this is a neuromuscular disease which is caused by transmission defect in the nerve impulse to muscles the neuromuscular junction is apparently affected acetylcholine which produces muscle contraction under normal condition no longer produces the contractions necessary to muscle movement okay so, and that's the reason it leads to fatigue weakening and the paralysis of uh, skeletal muscles okay so it is caused by the defect in the transmission of nerve impulse to muscles and it occurs when normal communication between nerve and muscle remember students have taught you the presynaptic and the post synaptic uh, junction uh, between nerve and 
neurons or and muscles so the uh, normal communication between the nerve and muscle is interrupted at the neuromuscular junction the place where nerve cell connect with the muscles they control normally when impulse travel down the nerve the nerve ending release a neurotransmitter substance which we call it as acetylcholine acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter substance okay so uh, when um, uh, neuron carries a impulse uh, the nerve ending release a neurotransmitter substance so the acetylcholine travels from the neuromuscular junction and binds to the new acetylcholine receptors which are activated and generate a muscle contraction but in, in myasthenia gravis the antibodies they block they alter and they destroy the receptors for the acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction neuromuscular junction is the space between neurons and muscles okay that prevents the muscle contraction from occurring and these antibodies they are produced by the body's own immune system and that is why myasthenia gravis is an autoimmune disease and myasthenia gravis is an autoimmune disease because the immune system which normally protects the body from foreign organisms mistakenly tries to attack itself okay it tries to attack its own body and that is why it is known as autoimmune disease autoimmune neuromuscular disease okay now comes muscular dystrophy muscular dystrophy is a progressive degeneration of uh, skeletal muscle mostly due to genetic disorder so it is a hereditary condition which is marked by progressive weakening and wasting of the muscle okay and muscular uh, dystrophy is a group of muscle disease that weaken the musculoskeletal system and it hampers locomotion muscular dystrophy are characterized by progressive skeletal muscle weakness defects in muscle proteins and the death of the muscle cells and tissues okay now what are the causes of uh, muscular dystrophy then in these conditions are generally inherited that means a person inherits from his parents or uh, from the great grandfathers or anyone and the different mu muscular dystrophies they follow various inheritance patterns however mutation of the dystrophin gene and nutritional defects at the prenatal stage are also possible in about 33% of the people affected by muscular dystrophy you know uh, there is a protein present in the muscle fiber that protein name is dystrophin so dystrophin protein is found in the muscle fiber membrane and its helical nature it allows it to act like a spring or shock absorber but the dystrophin it links actin actin protein which i have taught you in my previous presentation so dystrophin it links actin protein in the cytoskeleton of the muscle uh, plasma membrane which we call it as uh, sarcolemma okay so it gets disturbed and that is why this muscular dystrophy uh, happens okay so as i have told you that uh, certain genes they are involved in making protein that protect the muscle fiber from damage i have told you that genes they form protein with the process of translation so certain genes they are involved in making proteins that protects muscle fiber from damage muscular dystrophy occurs when one of these genes is defective each form of muscular dystrophy is caused by genetic mutation particular to that type of the disease many of these mutations they are inherited as i have told you that they may be hereditary but some occur spontaneously in the mother's egg or the developing embryo and can be passed on to next generation that means all the time it is not a 
uh, inherited it may be uh, it may occur spontaneously also okay now comes arthritis arthritis means uh, inflammation of joints okay inflammation of joints uh, see uh, arthritis earth means bones and itis means inflammation earth means joints also okay so uh, it is a form of a joint disorder that involves inflammation in one or more joint there are over 100 different forms of arthritis the most common form of arthritis is osteoarthritis and other arthritis the forms are rheumatoid arthritis psoriatic arthritis and related autoimmune diseases there is one more arthritis which we call it as septic arthritis it is caused by joint infection the major complaint by individuals who have arthritis is joint pain pain is often constant and may be localized to joint affected area the pains from the arthritis is due to inflammation that occurs around the joint and damage to the joint from diseases daily wear and the tear of the joint muscle strain caused by the forceful movement against a stiff painful joint and fatigue okay now comes another disorder of uh, muscular and skeletal system that is gout gout is a arthritis okay because it is an inflammation of joint and what is inflammation of joint it is arthritis so this is a disease in which defective metabolism of uric acid causes arthritis especially in the smaller bones of the feet see these are the smaller bones of the feet and uric acid gets accumulated here and because of the uh, deposition of the chalk stones this gout arthritis takes place okay so it can cause an attack of uh, uh, sudden burning pain stiffness swelling in a joint and it usually uh, in the big toe see okay these attacks can happen over and over unless gout is treated over time they can harm your joints tendons and other tissues gout is most common in men it is seen most commonly in men okay then in women gout is caused by too much uric acid in the blood most of the time having too much uric acid is not harmful many people with high level in their blood never get gout but when uric acid level in your blood are too high the uric acid may form hard crystals in your joint the most common sign of gout is a night time attack of swelling tenderness and redness and sharp pain in your big toe you can also get gout attacks in your foot ankle or knees or other joints so the attack can last a few days or many weeks before the pain goes away another attack may not happen for months or years okay so this was uh, all about uh, gout arthritis okay and it affects uh, approximately 1 in 40 adults most commonly men between 30 to 60 years of age and it less commonly affects women and what causes gout I have told you that it is caused by the buildup of too much of uric acid in the body uric acid comes from the breakdown of substance called purines that means when purines gets broken down then they form uric acid so the purines they are found in all of your body tissues they are also in many food such as liver 
dried beans and peas and acovies. Normally, uric acid it dissolves in the blood. It passes through the kidney and out of the body in the urine. But uric acid can build up can also be built up in the blood when these conditions happen. When the body increases the amount of uric acid, it makes that means when the purine breakdown becomes uh, many folds because the breakdown of the uric acid uh, urines uric acid is formed. So the body increases the amount of uric acid it makes. The kidney do not get rid of enough uric acid. This is the another condition when it gets accumulated in your joints because uh, the kidney doesn't get rid of enough uric acid. Or the third condition is when a person eats too many foods high in purine because when purine will break down then it will form uric acid so the this is the third condition when uh, uric acid can be formed in your joints okay and it may cause gout okay and fourth condition is when the uric acid level in the blood are high it is called as hyperuricemia obviously uh, when the uric acid um, content will be higher then obviously it will uh, get accumulated in your joints mainly in your big toe joint and the fifth condition is most people with the hyperuricemia do not develop gout but if excess uric acid crystals form in the blood gout can develop that means chances are there okay now comes osteoporosis osteoporosis is a condition of a fragile bone with an increased susceptibility to fracture okay and uh, y you can say that osteoporosis is an age related disorder which is characterized by decreased bone mass and that's the reason it becomes very fragile and there are more chances of fracture decreased level of estrogen is a common cause okay Osteoporosis literally leads to abnormally porous bone that is compressible like a sponge. That means the bone becomes that fragile. And this disorder of the skeleton weakens the bone and results in the frequent fracture in the bones. Osteopenia. Osteopenia is a condition of a bone that is slightly less than normal bone but not to the degree of the bone in osteoporosis. As we know that normal bone is composed of protein, collagen and calcium all of which bone gives strength to the bone right so the bone that are affected by the osteoporosis can break with relatively minor injury that normally would not cause a bone to fracture the fracture can be either in the form of cracking or collapsing the spine hips ribs and wrist they are the common areas of the bone fracture from osteoporosis although osteoporosis related fracture can occur in almost any skeletal bone okay now what is the cause of uh, osteoporosis then uh, decreased level of estrogen is a common cause which is seen in osteoporosis see this is the normal bone density as i have told you that hip uh, ribs and they are very prone to the osteoporosis okay see this is the zoom view of the normal bone matrix and this is the picturization of osteoporosis bone that means it has become very spongy and very fragile okay and uh, what are the symptoms of osteoporosis so the osteoporosis can be present without any symptoms for decades because osteoporosis doesn't cause symptoms until bone fracture moreover some osteoporotic fractures may escape detection for years when they do not cause symptoms 
Therefore, patient may not be aware of their osteoporosis until they suffer a painful fracture. The symptom associated with osteoporotic fracture usually is pain. Okay. And a fracture that occurs during the course of a normal activity is called as minimal trauma or the stress fracture. Okay. And for example, uh, some patients with the osteoporosis develop stress uh, fractures of the feet while walking or stepping off a curb. So let's see uh, here that bone is a living tissue that we all know and that is constantly being broken down and replaced. Osteoporosis occurs when the creation of new bone doesn't keep up with the removal of the old bone. Osteoporosis it affects men and women of all races but white and Asian women uh, of especially older women who are past menopausal they are at a very high risk. Uh, that's why it is said that menstrual women do not, uh, they are not prone to osteoporosis, but the uh, women with the menopause, they are very much at the higher risk of osteoporosis. So, this was all about the disorders of the muscular and the skeletal system. Thank you and keep watching Edipedia word videos.